Okay, guys, it's time for us to start a new project. Oh, yeah. This time around, we're going to be focusing on a very unique application that will center around the creation of a scene graph API. That's right. Basically, this is going to allow us to manage our scenes in a much more object-oriented fashion. That's right. Up till now, all we've been doing is creating a face here and there, positioning it, and then just doing everything manually Precisely. using OpenGL calls. Utilizing a scene graph is going to allow us to completely modulize the whole process of creating objects. So we can simply go in and say, create a new cube. Change his translate to such and such. His rotate Scale to such him and up, such. Exactly. Parent him to this person and have an entire hierarchy of everything mm -hmm. so that our scene can be represented in a really clean fashion. Not only that, through the creation of nodes, mm -hmm. we're going to also be able to do parenting very easily. That's right. So we'll be able to create geometry hierarchies. Right. Uh, quite simply. Very, very simply. Okay, so what are we going to be doing over the next few videos? Well, first of all, a we lot shall of coding. begin with the overview, <laughs> which is what we're doing now. Yep. Uh, then we're going to write our headers. We'll get all of our headers out of the way. Right, because basically we have quite a few nodes that we need to create. And I think it's five different headers and CPPs that we need to create. That sounds about right. Um, and basically that's going to be just blocking in everything so we can, as we go through the process, be able to compile and make sure everything works. Exactly. And then after that, we're going to create the node class, our abstract class that lies at the heart of the entire node idea. That's if you right, will. our whole scene graph. From there, what we're going to do is create the mesh and transform nodes, which we'll inherit from the node class. Right. From that, we're going to be creating the cube and the plane nodes. And basically, these are our primitives. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we're going to be adding controls, because we would like to be able to easily add in a cube or a grid. And obviously, you guys can expand this application to support cylinders, spheres, whatever you'd like. That's right. In fact, it could go even as far as uh, taking your OBJ importer right. and implement it in such a way that you can bring your own custom models in without having to do any fancy coding or anything. Yep. But anyways, we'd like to get some controls in place so that we can easily add items into our scene, and you could say into the scene graph. Right. And Start then, populating our scene that's graph. That's right. And then we'd like to have controls that would allow us to easily manipulate these I items around in regards to Their translate, translate, rotate, etc. Right. Basically modifying their transform node. All right, from there what we'd like to do is add selecting ability to our application. And this is really cool because basically it's going to basically we have all sorts of objects inside of our viewport, right? Right. And basically what we want to be able to do is just click inside of our viewport to select various objects which will activate the controls that we've created in the previous lesson and be able to manipulate all their transformations. Precisely. And once we've done that, we're going to introduce you guys to parenting. Oh, yes. We've talked about this just a little bit, mm -hmm. um, somewhere around the very beginning when we were just getting into OpenGL. Right. But now what we're going to do is we're going to really set up some true hierarchies. Yep. Because of the object-oriented approach that we're taking this time around, it's going to be very easy to establish this kind of a hierarchy. Definitely. So here is the scene graph. Right. And basically at the very top, at the very top, we have our node. And this is the, the root to everything, if you will. And this is where everything's going to branch out of. And on the left, we have our mesh. And this is what's going to hold our geometry. So like in our model, when we create our OBJ loader, basically we had our list of triangles or our polygons, if you will. And that's what the mesh is going to hold. So it's going to have things like being able to draw the mesh and create objects in, for the mesh. And then below that, we have our primitive. And this is going to be an abstract class that basically is going to allow us to manually, through code, create various geometry. Like if we want to create a cube or a plane as we do, or if you want to extend this to create spheres, cylinders, or whatever. If you're familiar with 3D applications, um, basically the main primitives that you can create, this is what these classes will be doing. Precisely. And then we have our transform node. And basically our mesh um, is going to have a transform node. Each of our meshes, if you will, is going to have a transform node. And this is going to allow us to position our objects. And so basically that's all we have for our scene graph. And, and, and this is... This is a really simple scene graph, obviously, and if you wanted to extend it, it's very easy to extend, but this is the th main things that we need 
to be able to start developing our own scene graph APIs. Exactly. Now, let's take just a second and sneak over here and look at the application so that you guys have an idea of what it is we're going to be building. Right. Uh, basically, when we start out, we have our basic navigation. We also have a single light in place, just providing some illumination. Mm -hmm. We can create two things, a cube and a plane. And right now, in our scene graph, we have a plane already. You always get one by default. Yeah. So let's go ahead and create a cube. And you can see we now have a cube in the scene, and it's green, indicating that it is currently selected. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to simply slide this over in Translate X. I'm going to go ahead and create another cube. And now what I'd like to do is select my first cube, shift select my next cube. Now come over here and parent these guys. Boom. Now if I was to select just this one cube right here and move him over, now it's well, moving his child as well. Exactly. In fact, look at this. If I rotate, Ooh, we're very rotating nice. that guy as well because of the way the hierarchy is going to work. So now if I select this guy and I rotate him, look at this. It rotates by itself. He's a child, so that, that's ex you know to be expected. Exactly. So let's go ahead and create yet another cube. So we'll make another cube. And now I'll simply say this guy here, this will allow us to demonstrate forward kinematics mm -hmm. nicely. Shift select this one, and let's do another parenting operation. And then with just this guy selected, perhaps push him over a little bit. And now let's go ahead and create another cube, making a very, very cheap biped. Just a kind of a piece of one, if you will. <laughs> so there, maybe another cube. And we can take this guy, push him down, and create another cube. Actually, this one down here, watch this. I can even select and delete. Very how nice. How cool is that? And, and this is how our scene graph API is really powerful. We can go in here and manage our entire scene without too much stress. That's right. All right here we go. Something complex now. Notice I have done, let me, let me deselect or grab the, so here we go. Select, shift select, select this guy last, parent. Now, if I want to, I could say, let's, let's say this guy over here is going to be my shoulder. And we're going to rotate him around the z-axis. So we can bring it down. Ah, my character's too low, so we'll grab our, around the sternum area, if mm -hmm. you will. And we can come over here and translate him up. Very nice. Let's grab our elbow right there. And with the elbow, we'll rotate around Y. Now, check it out. We have forward kinematics. Make him wave. Make him wave. <laughs> how, how about we come in here and do something like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have that ability, right? Very nice. And we want to push the hand forward, so pop, and smack you like such. And if we come back here and grab our back, if you will, mm -hmm. and take this guy, we've already seen that I can move him up and down, but let's say he wanted to perhaps rotate. You'll notice that, well, hang on, let's do this without deselecting everything, that we can rotate around, and all of our geometry, all of our children go along with him because they are all, well, children. Exactly. So it's really straightforward. So basically with this, um, this is the final application that we're going to be creating. That's right. And the, it's really cool, but the main cool part is the underlying architecture that we have because it allows us to do things like this very, very easily. This demonstrates a lot. Very As much As a matter so. of fact, throughout this demo, we're going to, I guess you could say, teeter in the realm of advanced C++ yes, programming. Yes, we will. So with that, let's go ahead and get started.